Hey guys, I am coming at you from my bathroom. I thought it'd be easier to do this video in my bathroom since all of my skincare is up here. So today I thought I would do a skincare version of a video that I've done for makeup in, in a similar way. So what I'm going to be doing is sharing with you 10 of my favorite skincare brands and my favorite product from each of those brands. I thought that this could be very useful for someone who maybe is diving into luxury skincare for the first time, or if there's one particular luxury skincare brand, hopefully I'll be covering it. If there's one particular brand that you're interested in, you're kind of like figuring out like which product to start with, I thought I would share with you my favorite one. So to start with, I should probably tell you my skin type, my age, all that kind of stuff. So I am 48, I'll be 49 in less than two months. Oh my God, I can't believe that, in less than two months. And I have dry, sensitive skin. I have suffered from eczema. I would say most of my life starting, uh, like in junior high, maybe high school, actually in high school, I started with eczema, have suffered with it ever since. And I want to say maybe the last few years, it has really calmed down. It will, it will still come up on occasion. Um, but really not nearly as bad as it was, uh, in my teen years, twenties, thirties, even my early forties. So um, I am thankful for that. I do feel like it's one of the very few things that has improved with age <laughs> is not really having eczema. So, uh, with all of that out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and start with a brand that I, it was like my savior, especially when I had eczema and that is La Mer. And I know La Mer is a very, very <laughs> controversial and polarizing brand. Most of their products work very, very well for me. And when I had eczema, I used their cream and it really helped my eczema. It was probably the only thing outside of like a steroid cream or anything else that I was actually prescribed by a doctor. Um, it was the only thing that actually helped my eczema calm down. Um, and, and I don't want to say cure it because my eczema would come back, but whenever I had a flare up, if I put the La Mer cream on it, it would go away. So I've been a long, long, long time fan and user of La Mer. So at this point I have three of their moisturizers. And so when it comes to La Mer, they have five moisturizers in their line and it basically, um, you know, they have something very, very, their original cream, very, very rich for very dry skin, uh, skin that's very bothered skin, um, whose barrier maybe has been uh, damaged, um, all the way down to like a gel cream and then like a mattifying lotion. Those are for oilier skin types. And what I've pretty much have learned or just kind of started practicing is not always using the same moisturizer every single day because my skin and probably much like yours, it changes depending on the time of the month, the season, where I am. I live in Las Vegas currently. I'm from New York, which is much more humid. And so my moisturizers will change. So it's hard for me to pick <laughs> one of these moisturizers, but there's probably one in here that works for your skin type. So I do have the original moisturizing cream. And this is an extremely, extremely thick cream. Now you only need a little bit of it. And what you want to do is you definitely want to warm it up and basically like break it down a little bit in your hands first. And then you want to press it into your skin. I know a common mistake with La Mer is you just used way too much in the beginning because you're not used to how thick it is, or you don't warm it up. You kind of just go straight in with the cream and it's just, it's too difficult to kind of get into your skin and like uh, spread it around basically. So you definitely want to do that. You definitely want to break it up first and then press it in. The other moisturizer I like to use is the moisturizing soft cream. So this is a little bit of a lighter weight uh, versus the cream. And you can see the texture there. It's just a little bit less spackly, if you will. It's a little bit like a more typical kind of cream, a cream that you would find, you know, with another brand. This, you don't really have to warm up with your fingers. You can, you know, spread it around if you want and then press it into your skin. I really like using the original cream when it is basically when my skin feels very, very, I want to say like damaged or super, super dry or just really bothered. Um, I also, uh, when I had some forehead burns, um, a few months ago, I used the La Mer cream on those burns and it, 
it's like magic, magic. And I also used an LED light with it, but the cream itself is really very, very healing. And so I like to use that. Um, like when I was back in New York, if I felt wind burnt, I would definitely use it here in Vegas. If I feel like incredibly parched, I will use that. Um, but more often than not these days, because again, getting older, my skin definitely feels a little bit more resilient. Um, I've been using the soft cream and the other moisturizer I'm going to mention. Um, but I'll use this as like a night cream, if you will. This is rich enough for me. And again, it's like if my skin does feel really bothered, I'll probably use the original cream at night and then use this during the day. So I'll just kind of mix it up kind of depending on, you know, how I feel my skin is doing. And the third uh, moisturizer from the La Mer line that I like to use, this is the lightest out of the three I'll be talking about. This is the Moisturizing Soft Lotion. And this one is kind of just like my everyday lotion. It has a pump. It is a little bit lighter than the soft cream. I like that it has a pump and that it's not a jar. So if I'm traveling, I'll probably travel with this guy versus those. Yeah, this is just like a really great, for me, middle of the road, lighter weight kind of foundation. Again, I have drier skin. So let's say you have oily skin. If you have oily skin and you're having one of those days where it's just feeling kind of dry, a little sensitive, maybe because of air conditioning or forced heat, um, or you just spent the day out in the sun, something like that, you may want to use the soft lotion. The other two that I mentioned may be a little bit too thick for you. But anyway, I feel like in the La Mer line, there is a moisturizer for your skin type. And I would definitely, definitely start with one of their moisturizers. It is like the cornerstone of the La Mer line. I, there's plenty of other products uh, from the La Mer line that I like, but these products are, are really what made La Mer La Mer. So uh, that's my recommendation for La Mer. So next I wanted to talk about Retrouvé. And Retrouvé is a brand that I stumbled across when I was shopping at Bergdorf in New York. And of course, what caught my eye was the packaging. It's very sleek, like matte black. Um, and it was just, you know, it just, it looked expensive. So of course I was intrigued, you know, what is this? And, um, I just ended up purchasing their luminous cleansing elixir. And this is the product that I started with. I have since tried probably every single one of their other products, all of which I would hesitate in recommending to anyone, but I love, love this luminous cleansing elixir. So what it is, is a cleansing balm, but it's not, it's not a typical balm. It's not a balm that you like, you know, stick your hand into a jar and then you kind of have to break it up. This is already uh, broken up for you. And so this is actually a pump. I know the packaging almost makes it look like it's in a jar, but there's actually a pump here and they have like airless technology. So when you're done pumping, you're done. I remember I tried like breaking it off <laughs> Because I was done. I was like, oh my God, I have no more um, elixir. And I tried like breaking this off and I was like, oh, I want to get to the very, very end. But they have an airless technology in here. Anyway, so you are not going to waste any, any bit of this with their fabulous uh, packaging. So it is in a pump. And so this luminous cleansing elixir, this balm is already... Uh, kind of broken down for you. And it is this silky, silky texture. Actually, let me pump some out for you so you can see. So there's the texture. You can see it's kind of running down my hand there. So it just goes right onto your skin. It breaks down every single bit of makeup. It makes my skin feel so, so clean. It breaks down all of my eye makeup, every beautifully waterproof mascara, everything. And I mean, I'm not going to go so far as to say this is eye safe, like Johnson's baby shampoo, but I have, you know, really cleansed my eyes with this product and I never get that cloudiness that I get with other balms. And I've never really gotten that like really harsh sting that I'll get when you get like soap in your eye. So really, really great refined ingredients in here. And what I also love about this is sometimes a balm will leave behind like a little bit of a film on my skin where I feel like I have to go in with a toner afterwards. This washes away so cleanly so that my skin feels super clean, but moisturized at the same time without any of that kind of film. So I just dampen like a washcloth and I just kind of wipe everything off. And it is such an exquisite cleansing balm. It is by far my favorite one. I have been testing out numerous ones, ones that are really great but none come close to the Retrouvé Luminous Cleansing Elixir. It is incredible. It's impeccable. Okay, next up is Augustinus Batter. And this is a brand I remember trying when I feel like they first kind of hit the States. I saw them at Barney's and 
I tried uh, one of their creams. I think they only had one at that point. And I was not a fan. I was not a fan. I felt like the cream maybe was like a little bit unstable, that it felt like it was separated from the oil and the actual creamy part of it. And, you know, it just, it just didn't feel great on my skin. My skin actually felt dry after putting it on. It was a very strange texture. Um, and I don't know, I was like, I don't know if I'm using this incorrectly. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's a cream. And so it's a product that I put on last and you know, that's just how I use creams anyway. Um, fast forward to, is this last year? Maybe last year or the year before at this point, I can't remember. I was sent a bottle of the Augustinus batter and I was like, mm. I didn't really have good luck with it. And then someone mentioned to me that it seemed different to them. And I was like, oh, really? So I pumped some out and I'm holding up the rich cream because this is what I would go with if you wanted to try out Augustinus batter. I pumped it out and all of a sudden the texture of it was completely different from what I remember. It was so much um, more, here, I'll show you. So much richer without being like oily. And that's what I remember with the first um, go that I had with this cream that it was, yeah, almost like oily and then cur like curdly, like, I don't know, maybe something had gone wrong with it. Anyway, ever since I got the new batch of the Augustinus batter, and I think they reformulated it maybe probably a couple years ago at this point. I love it. So this is the rich cream that I absolutely enjoy. I also have just the regular cream. And again, I kind of, you know, like the attitude that I have with the La Mer, I just sort of take an assessment, like, does my skin really feel that dry? If it doesn't feel that dry, then I just use the cream. And of course that one is recommended for oilier skin types. This one is obviously recommended for drier skin types. And so I will probably reach for the rich cream a little bit more often than the cream. Do you see that like luminosity that it leaves your skin? You'll hear a lot of makeup artists talk about using this product as like a primer because uh, not only does it moisturize, plump up, smooth out your skin, but it gives you this really gorgeous, like luminosity. It's really beautiful. So I love, love, love the rich cream in terms of, um, comparing it to La Mer. Um, it doesn't really have a fragrance. La Mer is, is fragranced. Um, so that's definitely a consideration. I know a lot of people don't like that. And the rich cream I would say is probably a similar texture to the moisturizing soft lotion, the La Mer that's in the pump. So, you know, if your skin is even too dry for this, then I would move up to La Mer. I would go for the moisturizing soft cream or the moisturizing cream because those both are much more moisturizing or thicker than the uh, rich cream from Augustinus Batter. Um, but this is what I would recommend going with. This is, I think, the cornerstone for his particular line. And I have been trying out a lot of his products and they're all really, really lovely. But yeah, I would start with the rich cream. Okay, next up is Sisley. You guys, this was really hard. Um, with those brands, like I love so many products from La Mer, Retrove, Augustinus Batter, but there's, there's like a standout product for me, um, even though I love everything about their line. With Sicily, I mean, there's so many, so many amazing products, so many products that are just a part of my everyday. But I thought if I were to, again, kind of like bring someone new to the Sicily counter who's like never used Sicily before, um, I think I would tell them to try the Velvet Sleeping Mask. Now, you guys have heard me talk about this this mask for a very, very long time. This is the second tube that I'm on. These are two fluid ounce tubes, by the way. And there's something so revitalizing about this mask. I love using this after um, I've taken a plane, a flight. It is, it just sort of brings my face back to life. If I didn't get a good sleep, if I am I don't know, stressed out, bothered, this is a, like a cure all, at least for the way you look. It's not gonna fix your other problems, but it's gonna fix the way you look. And you're going to look well rested, a few years younger, just bright eyed. There's something about this that just, I don't know, it just brings your face back to life. It's almost like adding water to a sponge. Like it just whoop and plumping isn't the only thing. It's something about like, it brightens your complexion, like everything, it does everything. So yeah, it's just, it's very, very revitalizing. I, I just, I love it. And it's a really special mask, which is why I think 
this would be my first stop if you wanted to try Sicily. Next up, I wanted to talk about Revive. Now, Revive is a fairly new skincare company to me. And I, wow, I've really been like going at it because I have fallen in love with their SPF. And that is what I'm going to recommend as the product to start with. This is their Soleil Superior SPF 50. And I love this as basically my daytime moisturizer. If my skin isn't feeling exceptionally dry, I just use this and it's great. I've got my SPF, I've got my moisturizer. It has the most incredible texture. And I'm just gonna pump out a little bit because this is precious to me. <laughs> but here is the SPF and it's just this really silky, smooth texture. It does not leave a white cast. It uses chemical sunscreen. I love it as a base for my makeup. It's just wonderful. Whenever I'm doing like a full face of makeup, usually I'll say, oh, and I have my skincare down. SPF is my last step. This is it. This is what I'm talking about. But I love the Revive line. Let me tell you, there, there were some competitors to this in terms of my uh, recommendations. Um, I just want to quickly mention their exfoliator is great because it's a physical exfoliator. I really like physical exfoliators, even though I know there's some controversy to that, but I'm not the biggest fan of chemical exfoliators. Um, although I have been coming across a few good ones and they have this serum that's incredible. Pretty much everything I've tried from Revive, I don't think you can go wrong. I think everything I've tried has been really, really great, but this is an exceptional, exceptional SPF in that the texture is really, really great. Can you see how like moisturized my hand is? Ugh, it's just, mwah, I love it. Absolutely love it. And I have a backup of this even. Next up is True Botanicals. And True Botanicals is also like a relatively new skincare brand to me. And I was introduced to them through Beautylish because I placed an order on Beautylish and they always send like a nice, like deluxe size sample of something. And they sent me a sample of the True Botanicals Chibula Active Immunity Serum. And I didn't have a serum at that point. And I was like, oh, okay, why not? So I tried it, man, I used up that deluxe sample and I was like online that next day ordering a full bottle. Well, this is now my third bottle. I just started using it. I think what I love most about it is well, obviously what it does for my skin, it calms my skin. So occasionally I'll get redness here and I do have makeup on today, but nothing too heavy. And so, yeah, you probably can't even see any redness because this is so incredible. So this is obviously a very effective serum. Otherwise I wouldn't be talking about it, but I love the texture of it. It's kind of like honey. It's kind of like an unsticky honey. Let me say that. So it's got like a little bit of density to it, but it's not, it's not too thick where I feel like for a serum, I want something a little bit on the thinner side, but I don't want it too runny. It's just a perfect, perfect like texture, I think for a serum, but yeah, it just, it works beautifully. And I really am enjoying the True Botanicals products. I use their Pure Radiance Oil. I use their body scrub. I have like a number of their things. And this is really, really standout, I have to say. So if you have like reactive skin, skin that just is kind of blotchy just all the time, try this. I bet the blotchiness will diminish with this. All right, next up is Shantakai. And Shantakai is just, you know, one of my all around favorite brands. You guys know how much I love their makeup. Their skincare is real. it's just, it's gorgeous. And they have so many different products. This, this was actually very, very difficult for me to pick. And I'll tell you what I went through. I was gonna talk about the Jasmine and Lily Healing Mask because that is an incredible mask. Um, I do prefer the Sisley Velvet Sleeping Mask to that one though, only because that velvet mask is magic, but the Jasmine and Lily healing mask is really soothing. It's very, it's calming. It's another like calming type of product. I was going to talk about that. I was going to talk about the um, rose water mist that they have because I love that, um, especially in these warmer months. I love their Rose de May cleansing balm. I mean, there are just so many amazing products, but this has become my favorite eye cream. And I know you guys often talk about, or often ask me, I should say, what my favorite eye cream is. It is the Shantakai Stress Repair Concentrate. And it comes in this little tub and you don't just have to use it around your eyes. I happen to use it around my eyes because I actually attended a Shantakai like Zoom, one of those like informational Zooms. And they were, everyone was talking about this product. And I was like, oh, wow, I've, I've never used that product. And a woman on there was talking specifically about how this helped 
her skin when she deals with allergies, seasonal allergies. And I was like, I need that because when I have seasonal allergies, I end up getting hives around my eyes. I'm puffy. My skin is just, it's irritated. It's moody. It's just doing all the wrong things like around my sinus area. So like here and even, you know, all around my eyes, um, but basically like here on top of my cheekbones. And when I started using this, I mean, I used to get hot, like little hives just all over, little, big, even kind of all over. They would, you know, one would pop up, it would go away. I'd get another one. That to me was actually like my barometer for like how bad seasonal allergies were. If I got a hive, it was pretty bad. It was pretty bad. My eyes would be itchy. Um, my under eyes would be extremely dry because of um, allergy season. But once I started using this product, man, it just calmed all of that down. It just like, it was like, it just gave this area of my face, like its own little like relaxation, like spa massage or something like everything calmed down. And I have been using this product nonstop ever since. And you guys know, actually, if you've been following me for a long time, you know that when it comes to eye cream, I'm, I'm not good about using it. It's like the first thing that goes out of my skincare routine. If I just feel like I'm putting too much stuff on my face, the last thing I'm going to do is put on eye cream, but I do not skip this step anymore. So this stress repair concentrate from Chantecai, incredible, incredible. Okay. The next brand I want to talk about and the product I want to talk about, I actually don't have. So I'm going to flash a picture of it up, but it is Amora Vixa. And this is um, a brand that I've been using actually for a very, very long time. And I started by using, it's like their version of a cleansing balm, but it's almost like a, like a gray, like a dark, dark brown gray color. And I really enjoyed it. It was great for sensitive skin. I don't remember the name of it. I'll flash that up on the screen as well. Um, so I've used a lot of their products. A lot of their moisturizers are really lovely. I love their gold line. I have this gold rescue cream that unfortunately I haven't been able to use as much as I would like. I'm always kind of testing out stuff, but one of their products just really, really blew me away. And it's actually one of their body scrubs. And I showed it to you in my last empties video, which was a while ago, um, but it's their gold. I think it's just their gold body scrub. It is awesome. Like I love the texture of the body scrub. It is almost like a jelly. So when you scoop it out of the big tub and you like, you know, put it down on your leg or whatever, usually in the shower, like there's water going. And if the texture is too loose, it just sort of like washes all away before you even get into it. And so this jelly kind of has like a staying power. It's just really, really cool. And there's like the perfect amount of like grit to it. It's not too rough. It's not too gentle. There's a really nice like fragrance to it. Uh, yeah, I, I just, I really, really enjoy it. That is probably one of my at least top three favorite body scrubs. And I use a lot of different body scrubs. It also is like slightly moisturizing, but isn't too oily in that it, it just kind of like leaves a film on my skin. I don't really like that. It kind of, it washes away really, really cleanly. And yeah, it's just great. Actually coming up with this um, video, I decided I need to, to re up on that because I did use it up. Like I said, I showed it to you and it empties and I've been using some other exfoliators, which are nice, but that one's really good. Really, really good. Next up is the brand Kipris and I'm holding up their Heliotrope Pot of Shade SPF 30. And I prefer chemical sunscreens. Um, it, they just go on smoother. They don't have the white cast. They're not usually like a thick kind of paste, blah, blah, blah. But I know chemical sunscreens is just not for everyone. And there was a point where, you know, I think we had a little bit of a scare when it comes to chemical sunscreen. People weren't sure, is it actually good for you? It's using too much bad for you. So anyway, I try and change it up. I try and use chemical and physical sunscreens, just kind of go back and forth. I probably predominantly use uh, chemical sunscreen on my face and physical sunscreen on my body. Anyway, so when I was kind of going back and forth, I decided to try this Kipris um, pot of shade because Kipris is an organic brand and all of their ingredients are grown in like small farms. It's just a really, you should read up on this company, by the way, Kipris. It is uh, in the US. And I was like, okay, let me try uh, their SPF. Cause I figured if anyone could do SPF really well, it would be Kipris. And boy, was I right. So this actually happens to be an old, an old dish tub. I actually have a backup 
in my closet, but this, they actually have expiration dates on the bottom, which is really, really handy. So this expires, uh, November of this year. So I just have a few more months to finish this up. So this has like a really thick texture, but it breaks down really, really nicely. So here it is on the back of my hand and it just melts right into your skin. I mean, you can see that there's a white cast, but the more I've used this product, the more I've really come to appreciate it because what I like to do is apply it in thin layers. And you know, you have to use a certain amount to get the correct SPF. So what I'll do, do you see how it just like melted into my skin where there's almost like no white cast? So I'll put on like layers of this, like light layers. I'll probably go in, you know, like two or three times and it just comes off impeccably. You get that, you know, kind of SPF shine, <laughs> that little glow there, but it's really, really smooth and really beautiful for an SPF, a mineral SPF. Um, most mineral SPFs, there's a little bit of thickness. Sometimes there's a little bit of grittiness. Sometimes there's that white cast. And I really don't see much of any of that in this particular SPF. A little bit of white cast, maybe, but it's, I mean, so much better than any other mineral sunscreens I've used. So that is the heliotropic pot of shade from Kipris. Okay, and last but not least is a brand that I used a gazillion years ago. I wanna say like five, six years ago before I moved to Vegas, actually, so probably six, seven years ago. Um, and then just sort of became reacquainted with it. And I'm talking about May Lindstrom. And I've been using her Clean Dirt uh, which is an exfoliator. I've been using her Youth Dew, which is a serum. I've been using her Blue Cocoon, which is a moisturizer. I've been using her Honey Mud, which is a mask. All of her products are really impeccable. It's just like Retrouvé. Like it's this small, uh, really well edited line. So the product that I want to share with you, even though, again, I would recommend everything from her line. I think they're all just incredible. But this one, I've just fallen in love with lately, and it's probably because the weather has been really, really warm. It's been very dry. Well, not lately, but it's very dry generally here in Vegas. I've been inundated with air conditioning. And so I've been using this little sample of the May Lindstrom Jasmine Garden Facial Mist. I now cannot get up without spraying this on my face. So what I do is I get up out of bed, I use the bathroom. And then usually what I do is I just pop in my contact lenses. I take an allergy pill. I go downstairs and I make my coffee. Now I have to spray this on my face. I think because our AC is on all night, my skin just feels a little dead by the time I wake up. Like it needs a little, like a, a little watering, if you will. And this has been incredible. I spray this just once around on my face. And man, I just, my whole, my skin just feels like, oh, here we are. Like it just got its drink of water. It's first drink of water of the day. I love it. I absolutely love it. Ooh, I'm getting a message. My camera's overheating. Okay, are you still recording? I hope so. Uh, okay, I'm talking about the May Lindstrom, the Jasmine Garden. I just love it. I love it. It is absolutely a staple product now every time I wake up. And I've used a lot of facial mists and I, I haven't ever really gotten like hooked on one. There's ones that I definitely prefer, ones that I really enjoy, like the Chantecaille one. I love that one. I love actually both of them. They have an orange blossom one. Um, I love the Gucci one. That's really great for kind of like post makeup. It gives me a really beautiful glow. But for like skincare, for like first thing in the morning to just like, yeah, like add water to this sponge. Ugh, this has been absolutely incredible. It's so soothing. I guess that's the word that I've been meaning to use for this. It's soothing and it's, oh, it's just lovely. Absolutely lovely. So I'm pretty much done with this sample and I have a full size on its way. So that is it. Those are my favorite products from 10 of my favorite luxury skincare brands. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video.